top left hand side our blue zerg player from kaizy gaming this is Raynor. and the bottom right hand side our red pros player from Psy Storm gaming is going to be max packs Game one of this little best of three that's going to be happening here. And uh, this is from the Afrika Champions Cup. So this was played last weekend, I guess. So I guess, yeah, about last weekend, maybe, obviously. Maybe not exactly on the weekend, but there or thereabouts. So yeah, um, Afrika Champions Cup was played last weekend or so and has been a, uh, a tournament a lot of people enjoyed. Obviously, I know not everyone could watch it. Some people couldn't see on Afrika. I'm sure a lot of you probably caught up on VODs of it. I haven't had a chance to check it out, so uh, obviously just checking it out in the best way I know how, which is just to cast the replays myself, which obviously makes a lot of sense, because then we can enjoy it together and I get to see the games, and I enjoy casting, would you believe it, so uh, yeah. So away we go, and uh, we'll see what happens in this uh, ZVP, Reno Max Pack was the opening match of the group, and look at that, Reno actually opens up with a proxied hatchery in the natural expansion of Max Packs. Immediately, Max Pax's response is a second gateway, which means he isn't going to pull probes to cancel this. He's just going to Corona Boost out the Zealot. With the second gate, he can get a second Zealot and probably then two Adepts. And then he has quite a good little counter-attacking force as well if he wants to use it like that. Could be effective against someone who went three hatch before pool here because there was not a pool before that third hatchery went down. So Zell and the Probe are just going to hit their way through the hatch for the moment. And then we do see the next Zealot coming up as mentioned. Obviously, like I say, you get two Zealots. Then you'll have the double gateways with the ability to build the Adepts, and that really does create the counter-attacking opportunity for you here as well. When you're playing like this as Reyno, you're not going to have Ling Speed or anything for quite some time, so dealing with Adepts with slow Lings is just going to be frustrating, especially when the Zealots can tank for the Adepts a little bit as well. So a lot that can happen in that regard. Max Pax's response as well. Wow, he even puts down a third gateway on a proxy. So Max Pax, not even expanding yet, is going to play a three gate attack. And now Reno's like, oh, okay, we're doing that, are we? So he's going to start up a spine crawler in response to this. Obviously, that makes a lot of sense. The spine crawler coming up defensively. Um, obviously, that will help. We see a battery trying to come up here. As we actually do not have uh -oh, a chance to really get to that battery for this adept, unless it can shade that. I think it's going to be stuck though, so the adept will fall and able to get back to where it wanted to be. Two zards and the adept coming up right now. It's just going to be having now a probe. Maybe considering the, the nexus, but not actually going into it just yet. The spine crawl up front. I'm not sure how much we can do here. The robot facility ends up being proxied as well. So Max Pax is just going to fully send this on one base, apparently. So full one base send out of Max Pax. I'm kind of a little bit shocked, but well, let's see how it works out. A couple of adepts going to try and shade on by. Obviously, that's the power of the adept. Just shade straight past that spine crawler. Force Reno to defend elsewhere. Now the spine's going to relocate. Oh, a supply block waiting for the immortal. And the already chrono booster as well. Yes, to saw now as the extra pile on finish. It's just a little while where that Corona Boost wasn't actually effective. It's a little bit of a shame. Adepts again threatening that Shade Pass, but they will not go because there's a lot of Lings hiding in the main base right now. As we'll get this Immortal up in a second, and Max Pax continues to fight. Reyno introduced this game being weird. It's going to be seeing our battery just go down. Spine Crawler is... Gonna push further forward. The Immortal's about to be here. There's a lot of Lings to deal with. We do have Sentry, so Force Field's available. We'll lose the battery. At some point, you want to try and get this Immortal onto the spine. If that's gonna chunk away through this entire army, you're gonna be in trouble. Force Fields go down, blocking a lot of the Lings out. Is that enough, though? Is that enough as the spine will get rid of the pylon here? The Robo facility still taking some shots. And the Immortal taking a few more hits as well. Our Lings come forward and looking for the wraparound. Immortal, the sentries, everything getting wrapped around. This looks disastrous for Max Pack, surely. As we are going to be seeing, the robotics facility is going to go down. So the Robo falls, the gateway is in some trouble. The queens are firing away, and they are picking their way through that pylon. 
Things come forward. Adept is going to get taken down as well. I'm just going to be seeing our Nexus building from Max Max and the natural expansion. Finally deciding to expand out of this, but I think that may be too little. Way too freaking late, all things considered. I mean, you're trying to expand now. Five minutes into this game, you committed to a one base. Reynolds on his way to his third. You're trying to build your first tech of the game now. One of your gates was across the map. Your robo was across the map. I say first tech of the game. I mean, obviously outside the robo facility that was proxied and then died. And can you even save these gateways? I don't even think a force field saves these gateways, right? First gate down, second gate down. The force field saves the lings getting in. But now you have no production. You have a stargate about to finish. And that's everything you have to play for right now as max packs. That is not good. <laughs> Just gonna be honest, guys. That is absolutely not good. In fact, some would say that's absolutely disastrous positioning right here. Um, this is really, really quite bad. Uh... Just not the game you want to be playing. So Reno looking very, very good for game number one at the moment. Of this best of three. Like I say, he invited the weirdness of this game with the, you know, the attack he went for initially and everything. And, you know, the proxy. And Max Max obviously really kind of doubled down on the weirdness. It didn't have to be anywhere near as weird or as aggressive as it was from Max Max. He just decided, yeah, hell yeah, let's, let's go for this in the end. Why not? Like I say, it did not really need to be like that at all. So we do have our Void Ray building up on the side of Max Packs, getting that underway for now. Getting that started up, the Oracle. Continuing for the moment, just a patrol across the map. Oracle goes down as well to a Spore Crawler, just in case that wasn't already... A little bit of a bad case situation. That is a little bit rough as well. Okay. Well, Max Max will have a Void Ray to kill an Overlord. That's something you can do without things going wrong, I guess. But I do believe that this is going to become a... Uh... I do believe this is going to become a, uh... a Reynold game, guys. I mean, there's only so exciting you can make certain games, right? And, and sometimes it's just good to accept the reality of the situation, which is Max Max is going to try everything he can to stay in this, but... It isn't exactly looking good. I mean, starting off a game down against someone as beastly as Rain, or even if many are as crazy as Max Packs, can be uh, not so good of a feeling. So Max Packs will try every opportunity he gets to step back into this before he gives it up. He's going to go second Stargate and a Fleet Beacon, which, I mean, cute idea. Will it really be something that you can make work? That I don't really believe at all. Gonna be seeing that Nexus going down on the third again. I mean, the problem is you just don't have time to get there. Now, Reynolds' tech wasn't brilliant, in fairness. The lair is not just finished yet. But, I mean, he can keep the third base cancelled. And as long as he can keep the third base cancelled, I think, in general, he'll continue to have a fairly good time for himself throughout this game. So, keep that uh, third cancelled. Even if Max Max starts to get carries, you have so many ways to just punish that. You can just flood. You can just get way too much. Well, Tempest on the way out. He's going to choose Tempest. They build a bit faster. I'm not sure if Tempest really win you this game, though. There's a Spire from Reno as well, so he is just going to be set to deal with this all the way throughout. Audrey comes to the right side. I'm just going to see those two Tempests finishing momentarily. I mean, are we building the Tempest because they build quicker, but then they're just less effective against Lings? The problem right now really is just Ling run buys have cancelled your third endlessly. Lings have a melee upgrade. There's literally no answer to Zerglings. I mean, I mean maybe the Tempest makes sense because they're the only hope again units out. Maybe the carriers really are too much of a stretch. Maybe that's just because the entire game right now is just a little bit too much of a stretch, right? Is that such a crazy statement? I do not think so. Well, drones going down across the map as Max Pax will find some harass in the natural. Some adepts get over here to be able to pick off four drones, five drones. So, it, again, it's something, but... Oh, oh God. <laughs> Is that both the Tempest? No, just one of the Tempests in the middle of the map going down to the Queen Drop. That, my friends, is going to be GG's, and Raynor does take the first game of this best of three. So, map number one. Look to see if this game could go any better. I mean, we had plenty of time to digest that last game already, considering it was kind of over at the 5 minute mark and ended at the 9 minute marker. As in the top right side, our Blue Zerg from Kaizy Gaming is going to be Raynor. Bottom left, our Red Protoss player from Psystorm Gaming. 
This is Max Bucks. Game two of our best of three. I'm just going to be having our probe. Corona boosting out here to begin with early. Not a lot too exciting going on super quickly, would you believe it? As we do have our hatchery starting up on the side of Reynos. Just going to get that going. Obviously was blocked uh, from the natural, so has to come up on the third location. But that's something we're obviously very well aware of and used to seeing nowadays in the world of uh, ZVP, so Reno will deal with that by building a third location and into his gas, into his pool. It doesn't look like he's going to get a drone across the map to be aggressive himself this time. Now, I'm going to make some predictions here, guys, because while I didn't see these games myself, we have seen in the last week or so especially a big uptick in A, double Stargate Fleet Beacon stuff, and B, Twilight Council and Glaives. And I have heard a couple of rumorings that that was due to max packs using them throughout this event so we will uh my prediction here with it being inside now with that little bit of prior knowledge and honestly just because of the last week has been full of these builds and i've casted max packs doing those kind of builds a whole bunch as well this is going to be i think maybe a good map to maybe pop some glaives out on you know it's a good map also for playing that kind of normal kind of style of kind of blink and just kind of pressuring into that blink play etc so yeah, sort of thing I think we could uh, also see. We could just play kind of what we would have thought was, uh, or would have thought of as being very regular. But uh, like I say, the Glaive style has been a popular one recently. Let's see what goes down. Stargate probably means Oracle into Blink. Twilight obviously pretty much does mean Glaives. Let's see what Max Pax wants to opt for here for this game. Number two, he's down a map. Whatever he does, obviously, he has to believe is uh, nice and... Uh, Plausible. Second gate goes down before anything. Well, that makes me feel it's going to be at least some kind of a depth pressure, right? Second gate, third gate into a depth, then maybe something else. Oh, straight up glaives, though. Not just yet, so that was a little bit wrong, am I guessing? Let's just see a few more links from Reynolds. He's just trying to get those links prepared for the adept phase of this game. Just the first two of three adepts. Well, usually one or two adepts, not two or three. First one or two adepts, obviously, that come through and they... Obviously, usually able to uh, pretty well for themselves in terms of, you know, threatening drones. Well, Lings obviously want to be able to deal with that as best as possible. There's a couple of adepts will be coming along, heading in, and getting rid of some of these Zerglings. So, that's exactly what you wanted those Lings for, to try and help deal with this. And, I mean, as long as you're losing these Lings, that's fine. You just don't want to be losing drones. If you end up losing two drones here, and you've pulled the drones, that's a little bit painful. Two, three drones, and some links, and the drone pull is actually fantastic for those two adepts, and Max Pack should be happy there. His follow-up, Twilight Counts on Robo Facility, so three gates, then Twilight Robo. I think this should still be Glaives, could maybe even add more gates after this if he wants to play extremely aggressively. There is the glaive starting up. We'll see how many uh, gates he ends up on. Again, with the Robo coming up, he will have access to a prism before that glaives is done. So he can then still power this up into, you know, prism, you know, reinforcing the depths across the map and all the rest of it. That or he drops a Robo Bay and starts thinking about maybe, a, you know, disruptor drop. Either way, he should be getting a prism. And I think, again, with the way that this was lining up, the extra gates make a lot of sense as well. So there are the three extra gateways. Six gates in total going to be the plan. So six gates, slaves. That's going to be what we head into here as a few of those adepts going to go shading forward, try and make their way into a mineral line and see what they can do. For now, they're just going to have to end up cancelling. The lings and the queens were there to just scare those adepts away initially. Yeah, six gates of adept play. I like it because it's not been a clean start to the game from Raynal. He did take a bit of drone damage to the first couple of adepts. You know... I feel like this can absolutely work. He is starting to prep with Roaches, though. Reynolds going to be defending on 39 drones. Now, when you're defending this on 39 drones, you need to take no damage. Maybe you can lose a few drones, but you need to then be defending overwhelmingly after that. If you don't manage that, you're going to be in a ton of trouble. So, let's see what we can do as Reynolds adds more drones now. I mean, the first few Roaches are nice. He had some extra Roach uh, drones. He's building Spores. Obviously, they are completely useless in this fight. The only thing they could maybe do is come to try and zone out a War Prism. The Spores are in case of DTs, right? 
So, not really ideal to be building those. Well, Overlord's coming up. He's going to go back into Roaches now. Still obviously really needs to try and make sure he doesn't lose too much. He has a Stalkable by the time for the full wall off. And we're just going to see these Adepts commit in initially getting a Queen. Shading by because there's not going to be anything in position to hit them once they've shaded. And as you play catch up there for a few moments, you're then going to be able to move your way up in toward the main base of those Adepts. Yeah, eight drones already going down. This feels very bad for Reno. This already feels... I said you can't take too much damage. I had a few more drones to maybe add a little bit more leeway to that, but... Yeah, this kind of feels as though our drones... I keep on moving around. 15, 16 workers going down. Very nicely done. Our Lings want to go after those Adepts as well. 19 workers dead. Okay, this is way too far gone. We're going to go for the Dark Shrine to follow this up as well. I guess why the hell not right now is... Reynor, he only has one spore left, and it's kind of low. We're going to start hitting it here because he doesn't have any drones to target. Don't think the DTs are a bad call on the follow-up. Max Bags is going to be kind of down in army supply, but again, he's got six gates, so he can rebuild a lot of adepts quickly. And that's going to keep Reynor at home because he has to keep dealing with the threat of these adepts. No point going across the map to counterattack if your opponent's then just going to wipe out your entire mineral line in the process, right? Shading forwards, and don't really want to fight the roaches, but are there enough roaches in the natural? There are a few. And he's going to split, actually. He's going to send some adepts onto that natural mineral line. He's going to send some up into the main base to try and get more done. Kills a few lings in the process. He's so far killed five drones, and you know, obviously with these adepts still alive, more to come. And we're moments away from seeing DTs make an appearance, and if he goes straight for the spawn, the natural, I think he's probably just going to be winning this game. Oh, there's roaches here, though. He might be able to protect that spore, so he's just going to go elsewhere. But is there a spore anywhere else other than the natural? Not in the main. I don't think there is one on the third base. I think it died off early already. Yeah, he lost the spore on the third, so the only spores on the natural are trying to build the others up now. The DTs have a ton of time to do a ton of damage, quite frankly. One spore building there is under fire, so is the one in the main base. Doesn't look like you can force this DT off of it with the units just yet. The DT is going to be able to get the kill. And that means that we are going to be seeing an uh, undefended main and an undefended third, and hence an undefended game two for Raynor. Max Pax ties this series one to one, adept in his way to tying the series. Bottom left, our blue Zerg player from Kaizy Gaming. This is Raynor. And the top right, our red Protoss player from Psy Storm Gaming. Give it up if you're cheering on Max Packs. Game three of this series. And two very aggressive games, obviously, both kind of on the side of Max Packs. Raynor instigated the weirdness in that first map. I will stand by that with that proxy hatchery. He definitely encouraged Max Pax to play a bit weird and to do things a little bit differently. But, um... Obviously, generally, we, uh... Generally, we have to say that it was Max Pax that still chose to be the aggressor. So Max Pax being a pretty aggressive proto so far in this series. We'll see if he keeps it up going into Game 3, Data C. As a map, obviously, usually is one of the maps we just say is the standard map, right? It's the best of three map. It always makes it in. Very few people veto this map. We're very happy to see it in best of threes. It's one of the most commonly played ones. So, in that regard, very standard. It should really kind of... Shouldn't really kind of give you much love when it comes to... Uh... Yeah, it shouldn't really give you too much love or kind of opportunity to be, like, overly aggressive on. But I'm sure Max Pax may uh, have a chance to find a bit of a way, perhaps. Second gas going down in the main base, just getting that set up already, get that started. It's going to be seeing our hatchery, obviously, on the third location from Reno as well. We're going to see exactly where we take things in the next few moments, then. We're going to see exactly what sort of setup we're going to be having in map three of this series. We'll see with the Cybercore finishing especially. We can see what kind of tech we want to play for Max Pax. He does start Warp Gate first, which suggests maybe not Stargate. So that already could be uh, quite intriguing.
There it is, straight into the Twilight Council. Maybe you just play straight up four gate glaives this time around. Maybe you just play straight four gate glaives this time around. Could be a uh, way of doing things as we do you see our gateway getting placed into position. Twilight is about to finish up. The Ling speed's about halfway done. This a depth coming through. Wants to try and go after the drones here. Depth is actually going to shade by. Obviously, pretty safe to shade into the natural. Wings come after the adept, escaping away down the bottom side. And there's a glaives coming up from Max Packs. I guess, like I say, to me, this should really just be a bit more like standard kind of four gate glaives, but he adds one, two more gates. Maybe he just doesn't go Robo Facility, right? It's just gonna play uh, three gates, glaives, and then kind of go from there. Robo Silly coming through, Rotron is a building, and drones are queens all continuing up for the moment. And there's the Robo Silly now coming in a little bit later here from Max Pax. Well, Raynor, 38 drones here, hereabouts is where you stop to get ready to build a few roaches, right? Roaches and lings combined with this generally will get the job done. As things continue through, Rotron is about to complete. No Deb's gonna start shading through the bottom side of the map. Prism about to finish, Robo Bay on the way in. That's gonna be our follow up here for Max Packs. Now, one of the popular follow ups when you only go three gate glaives is to go into like disruptors and a bit of a disruptor drop, and then you can attack with like. And an adept disruptor combination a bit later on than usual can obviously be quite powerful obviously the adepts are great against the lings if the disruptors clear the roaches you can have a great time and if you disrupt a harass before that point there's obviously the chance to put yourself in the lead going into that as well so a lot of possibility and a lot of opportunity there and so a couple extra adepts will warp in on this bottom side adepts continue to warp and getting ready to press forward here and she had straight past that group of queens. Queen's gonna turn back around, put a bit more down and jaunt onto the adepts, and the adepts is gonna come back onto the queens for a little bit here. Continue to pick their way through those. One queen going down. I mean not bad harass. Obviously, you're forcing Raynor to make units, and now we've got the disruptors on the way as well. Looks like as we get prism speed, this prism. We'll probably want to turn back around shortly, right? And go pick up those disruptors and then bring them across to harass with. Obviously, the prison also wants to stay close to the adepts of Priyani for reinforcements and stuff, but unless we're just going to try and walk the disruptors across the map, that'd be kind of wild. Some of the adepts shaded into this mineral line. We get eight drones straight away. Reno was not ready for that at all, and that's expensive. Suddenly, Max Pax leads by 10 workers, and so Reno will have to invest heavily into a few more drones at this point, otherwise, you'll be in a bit of trouble. Yeah, that's disruptor number two out. Max Pax has a ton of minerals. I wonder if he's just struggling to take a third base because his units are on the map and there's Ling's spot in the third base location. If you already wanted to start a third up, right, that would have been, yeah, understandable. He gets a forge going and blink as well, so he's ready for his follow-up here. He's still going to have the disruptors to harass with for a while. Looks as though the adepts are going to be plentiful to turn the Ling's away for the moment. So far, so good. Depths continue down the bottom left side of things. Our Nexus is building on that third. Disruptor's popping out. Roach is going to be pulling away. First disruptor shot lands. Going to see another disruptor shot hitting a Roach, and the Adepts will continue to trade out a little bit here. Queens, Roaches continue to come on through, and just going to be having the Adepts. Continue to try and fight for as long as possible. Yeah, honestly, don't feel like these adepts are doing too well. Although, I mean, you're forcing the drones to pull away, which is nice. These last two adepts are not shading away, so those are absolutely stuck in the main base. No way out for them at the moment. 
approaches will get straight on them and continue to clean them out as we just lost a queen here. The disruptors finding more victims. Remember that this is a blink plus one follow up though on the side of um, Max Pack, so he will have those stalkers on the map soon. Accompanied by disruptors, should potentially make this uh, rather powerful. So. Definitely something to be looking at as... Oh, the prism was so low there as well. Just escapes away with a couple of disruptors too. Just making it out of trouble right now. Good job, little prism. Getting yourself out of there alive. Well handled as we do see the battery healing that prism back up a little bit. Okay, nest about to finish up. We do see the lings and the drones still building from Reno. So we're starting to see just full Ling Bane Roach combo. Melee upgrade starts as well. He's not keen on a great economy. He did take some damage. He was slowed down a lot. Stalker's Disruptor going to be coming through and just going to get rid of a little bit of the creep spread here as well. So, you know, what we can on that. And those disruptors just being annoying when they can as well, but the stalkers just want to be careful, don't want to be surrounded by lings, but they have the blink out for the moment. Reno against this now wants to try and minimize the effect of these stalkers while not losing anything more. He's not in the greatest of positions, like I say, his economy's not been incredible throughout this so far, it's been kind of lackluster. So he really needs to find efficient defenses right now and try and hope he can hold these stalkers off. He's honestly not looking good, being equal on workers, equal army supply, no upgrade when he's playing against plus one. All the advantages are there for Max Packs. And what's even worse for Reno is the Disruptors, right? I mean, all of that's great for Max Packs. If this was just Stalkers versus Ling Roach, you've got Disruptors to add into that, and that adds a whole new problem in for Reno, who has to be so careful about how he moves forward with his Roaches. It means he has to pull back a bunch. It gives the Stalkers a whole bunch more opportunity to get free shots off. It's going to limit the damage that Reno can do, and it's going to mean that, really, Max Packs should be able to consistently find very efficient trades from this point on. That has been happening so far as our stalkers get rid of the hatchery, they get rid of the broodlings, a few adepts. Shading from the top side, gonna work their way over the left side and just gonna try and hit the third again without a fourth. Raynor is in a bunch of trouble. This disruptor shot could have maybe been aimed a bit better toward the roaches, but you know what? Disruptor after disruptor come in, it's already doing a lot of damage and the supplies now are fully in favor of Max Pax. Max Pax is looking very good to maybe take Raynor down here. And keep a little bit of, I, I believe he's on a bit of a winning streak against Reynold right now. This would probably keep that alive. I'm thinking of that because of some ESL Open Cup action I casted recently. As another disruptor comes up, knocks down a couple of roaches again. Again, that's the power of these disruptors. You're constantly forcing yours to run away, move without attacking, and that's where the stalkers just find extreme efficiency in a game where you're not even the player needing the extreme efficiency, right? I think is the real crazy part of it. That's the real issue for Reynold. Stalkers blink around, drones pull in, it is going to be game over. And Max Pax takes game three of this best of three. And that means it's going to be a 2-1 victory to Max Pax. Congratulations. That was well played and 